Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. Today we're building a highly anticipated new Bifaco module, the VCMC or Voltage Controlled MIDI Controller. This thing can do a lot to unite the worlds of modular and computer systems, or even to connect CV sources as controllers for older MIDI gear. The VCMC sports 10 CV inputs, 8 faders, and 8 gate inputs with associated buttons. The faders can be configured independently or as offset or attenuators for the CV inputs. It also has an OLED display where all of the various configuration options are accessed via an encoder. The menu system is very well organized and intuitive. It has both USB and 5 pinned in MIDI connections and via USB it is a class compliant device immediately recognized by your computer. This module gives me some really cool ideas for experimentation. In the baggie you get the printed build guide, the panel and PCB, the OLED, the TZ of course, and all of the hardware and electronic components needed to complete the build, including four knurlies and a power cable. Building it is a little bit different than usual, so I followed the manual very closely. I started by placing and soldering the resistors, ferrite beads and diodes for the power section, as well as the socket for IC1 and the power header. Then all of the 100 nanofarad bypass capacitors. I soldered one leg of each capacitor from above so they wouldn't fall off once I turned the board over to solder the rest. This way I didn't have to bend out all of the leads. Next come the five 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors. Make sure they're correctly oriented. Same goes for the voltage regulators. The reason we focused on the power section was so we could test all of the main voltage points before moving on. So plug in the TL072 and follow the guide page from the build manual to check all of the test points with your multimeter. If everything checks out, let's open the Teensy bag. We need to assemble the headers that will attach it to the main board. This can be kind of tricky, so be very careful. I started with the SMD header that goes inside near the middle of the Teensy. Be careful to line it up symmetrically, solder a corner pin and adjust until perfect. Then solder the other pins. Use the soldering braid to remove excess solder if needed. Now solder on the two pin male SMD header. This is super tricky, be careful not to make solder bridges with the neighboring pads. This is the power input for the Teensy. Tin one pad first, position the header, and reflow the solder, adjusting the header position until it's perfect, then solder the other pin. Now place the outer headers on the main board, both female and male snap together. And snap the female headers on the SMD males you already soldered on the Teensy. Then place the Teensy on the board and solder the remaining headers on the Teensy. Since there are some diodes in there, I decided to solder on the diodes first, then the headers to the board. Moving on to the OLED display assembly, I started by fastening the four nylon spacers. But when I realized there were some components underneath where the OLED would go, I decided to install the remaining components before finishing the display. I started with the diodes, for the IC sockets and the COM header, I used the snake charmer technique to solder the corner pins. Then on to the resistors, capacitors and transistors. I snapped on the ICs and finally fitted the OLED with its headers to the mounting posts before soldering on the headers. 
Next came the hardware. Make sure you use the Phillips heads to secure the tall nylon spacers to the board, not the hex screws, which go on the panel side. I then snapped on the USB connector. In preparation for the faders, I trimmed down the leads and touched up the soldering on all of the components underneath where they'd go. Then I placed the faders and soldered them on, leaving the position lugs for after testing. For each fader, I soldered one pin from above to help secure it before turning the board around to solder the other two. Then I placed the encoder and the buttons, taking care to position them correctly according to the silk screen. I then snapped on the jacks and the MIDI connector. Now, before attaching the panel, I used some super glue to secure the plastic screen protector. But I used too much and some spilled over to the panel, marking it slightly. So use less than I did or another kind of glue. Now place the panel over the hardware, nudging it until everything fits through. Fasten the nuts for the jacks and the encoder and tighten the hex screws to the nylon spacers. Place some masking tape over the buttons and turn the module around to solder the hardware. I put in the MIDI connector last, but did not solder it in yet. For the grand finale, I placed the fader caps and encoder pot, and the module was ready for testing. I just needed to flash the Teensy since my kit was still beta and the Teensy came blank. This proved more challenging than expected for me with my iMac and High Sierra. My trusty bootloader didn't recognize the Teensy, and I had to do a bit of research and finally install the Arduino software with the latest beta Teensy Duino extension to be able to flash my Teensy but finally I managed. You can remove the Teensy from the module for this since it powers from the USB cable to the computer. I tested the module on my DAW rack and everything worked perfectly. So I went back and soldered the MIDI connector and the fader position lugs. That's it for today. Be sure to watch the next video where I demo this baby connecting my modular to Bitwig on the computer and to some cool iPad apps. Please like and comment, subscribe and join me on Patreon. See you soon and stay noisy.